This is the Nubia Red Magic 3. It's a phone. It's a big, powerful, crazy phone. Other phones are typically made for your average everyday use, but this one, well, it's made with one function in mind, gaming. Nubia sent this unit in for us to review, and it is without a doubt the most powerful phone I've ever used. And for its size, this might possibly be the best portable emulation system I've ever seen. The model we're looking at is loaded with 256 gigs of storage that isn't expandable, 12 gigabytes of RAM, a Snapdragon 855 CPU, and an Adreno 640 GPU. What does all that mean? Well, it has lots of space and it's very, very, very fast. You've got a lot of typical features you might expect from a modern phone as well, like a fingerprint sensor, a whole range of motion and directional sensors. It's rocking USB type C, a dual nano SIM slot, and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that in my testing as a daily phone seemed to last a couple of days with regular usage. You got a front facing camera and a rear 8K camera. That's 8K. The camera I'm using to make this video right now doesn't even do that. The Red Magic 3 has a 6.65 inch screen at a resolution of 2340 by 1080. The screen uses Gorilla Glass 4, which should keep it nice and scratch free as long as you're careful with it. But when you do get the phone at the start though, it comes with a pre-installed screen protector that I'd recommend keeping on. However, for the rest of this video, I took it off because <laughs> I like to live on the edge. Oh, and this screen, by the way, is an AMOLED one, meaning that it has amazing color representation with completely dark blacks. But unlike many other OLED screens I've used in the past, this one runs at 90 hertz. Combined with its lightning fast specs and using stock Android 9, browsing websites and general movement on the screen is noticeably quick. The front facing stereo speakers are pretty loud, but they tend to sound just a little bit rough if you set them at their peak volume. Still though, it's nice to have two speakers on a cell phone. This is a big perk for watching movies or anything like that. Instead of having speakers that aim away from the screen, they actually aim directly at you. Well, that was a lot of phone talk. Needless to say, this is an epic phone stuffed with amazing features. But of course, we wouldn't be talking about it on here if it was just a phone, because if you used it as just a phone, you'd be missing the point. This thing has other abilities that puts it in a league of its own. Something you probably can't tell just by looking at this phone is that it has a cooling system. According to Nubia, this phone has active liquid cooling with a fan, a real actual cooling fan that you can use whenever you want. You've got two vents, one on the side and the other on the back, and they really should never be covered because if you do cover them, the phone would probably overheat. The phone case that Nubia sent along with this review unit made sure to keep those areas open. And the whole reason this fan is here is that unlike many other phones I've used, this one has a switch, a very special switch that once turned on activates the Red Magic gaming interface. From here, you can select games, change the performance of the phone, activate the fans, and in general, it provides you customization features well above anything else I've ever seen on a standard phone. There are two touch sensitive triggers on the side of the phone with the additional option of using the rear fingerprint scanner as a third input. I would usually prefer to have physical buttons over touch sensitive ones, but these do work pretty well and the phone provides a little slight vibration to let you know that you've actually inputted anything using them. You do have the option to purchase a separate controller called the Red Magic Esports Handle. While it's built pretty sturdily, I think it's not the best design in the world. I mean, it can be used as a wireless controller through Bluetooth, but combined with a special case, it has the ability to attach to the either side of the phone. The problem is that while it features a great thumbstick and plenty of good clicky and responsive buttons, you only have one of them on one side of the device. You'll have physical controls in one hand and touch controls in the other. I played a bunch of games and found that to really make this work, you'd likely need a second controller, which you could actually do, and it would look just kind of like the Nintendo Switch. But unlike the Switch, this controller will not charge once attached to the phone. You'll need to separately charge it using USB-C. If I'm going to use a physical controller, I personally choose one that has more buttons and at least has dual thumbsticks. Sure, you wouldn't be able to hold both the devices at the same time, but that's where this second peripheral comes into play. 
This is the Red Magic Docking Station. It's a simple snap and design that comfortably fits the Red Magic 3. It uses a special connector on the side that allows you to plug in a USB-C cord directly to the back of the dock, a secondary headphone jack, and even an Ethernet cable for more reliable wired internet. And on a phone, that's pretty wild. This is a great little device and does exactly what it's supposed to do. My only real problem is that outside of holding the phone easily to play games with a separate controller, I really don't understand what this is for. The Ethernet port is its one standout feature, but I'm really not sure what games on a cell phone really need that kind of speed and reliability. If you're a professional cell phone gamer who needs that speed, this is probably for you, but it doesn't really do much for me. The one feature I'd hope for the dock to provide would be video out, but unfortunately it doesn't provide that function. In fact, that's something that this phone appears not to do at all, but what it does do is play games and play games exceedingly well. Android games have rarely ever been made to tax a phone's hardware. Developers usually make them to be playable on even the cheapest of phones out in the wild, but some titles do make use of high-end graphics. Fortnite comes to mind, and on this phone with the gaming mode turned on and settings set to max, you'll be running this game effortlessly. There were a number of other Android games that played incredibly well. You'll likely not run into anything that will really slow down on here. And if the game features 90 hertz support, you can run Run them at 90 frames per second. The 90 hertz screen can be an issue as well. I came across more than one game that had issues running in that refresh rate. Sometimes games will run 90 frames per second by running the game 30 frames per second faster than normal. This happened to me on several games like Crazy Taxi and even Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So you'll need to switch to a lower refresh rate when playing certain titles like that. But that's not the only issue. Due to the screen's large and wide aspect ratio, sometimes games will be cropped in in such a way that you won't be able to see all the visuals. Like in Pac-Man here, you'll notice that some of the image is being cut off at the top and bottom. It's possible that in a future update they'll be able to fix that, but for now I wasn't able to find a way that didn't involve downloading a third-party app or utilizing a more advanced method. But where this phone really shines is in emulation. Previously on the show, we talked about the Mochi i7s, which was a great device with tons of power, but this phone is way beyond that and features a newer version of stock Android OS. Retro games run as easy as you'd imagine, but with systems like N64 and PlayStation, you can really push the emulators to the limit and run them at much higher resolutions with steady frame rates. The same can be said about the PSP and DS as well, and with all that extra power, you can even use anti-aliasing if the emulator supports it and create even better and sharper looking visuals. A system I wasn't expecting to run perfectly was Dreamcast. Through all my testing, every single game seemed to run properly. Now, of course, Dreamcast emulation still isn't perfect, but this phone seems to have enough power to run them really well. This means that for those of you who prefer Crazy Taxi released on the Dreamcast with the original soundtrack, well, you'll be able to play it on here without a hitch. But it was around this time that I thought, hey, if this phone is running everything else so well, how about GameCube? Could this finally be a slim phone that gives us the ability to run the Dolphin emulator? Well, folks, I believe we're finally here. This isn't perfect, and I believe the emulator could be a little bit better tuned for this hardware, but Dolphin runs at a level that I would personally consider playable. Super Mario Sunshine seems to run at the correct frame rate of 30 frames per second. It appears to fully be playable, but once in a while, you might see a minor frame drop here or there, but it's really infrequent. And to be honest, I was able to play a lot of the game this way. I tried a few other games like Metroid Prime, Mario Kart Double Dash, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and even The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Each game ran in a playable state, but once in a while, I did notice a few hiccups. Overall though, this is a very awesome experience, and once Dolphin is updated a little more, I'm pretty sure you'll be seeing improved performance with more features to make playing games on a phone like this even better. And with that in mind, I decided to try one more system, PS2. Now this is promising, but it didn't seem to run just quite yet. I crashed the app while trying to run Metal Gear Solid 2, and while it did turn on Final Fantasy X, the frame rate was pretty bad. Maybe they'll update the emulator in the future to make better use of this hardware, but that just hasn't happened quite yet. But 
this is something that could be happening in the future. I've talked a bunch about what is good with the Red Magic 3, but of course, there are a few things that aren't so great. One thing to keep in mind and something I started paying a lot of attention to while using this thing is that while typical phones out there right now offer a lot of kinds of water resistance, this phone probably shouldn't get wet. Remember, there are air vents on here, and if any water gets in there, it might damage the internals of the phone. Plus, if you're ever getting into a really heated gaming session and put the phone down on the table, you might block the air vents, which could also overheat the phone. This is something you really don't have to worry about with a lot of other phones, but with this one, it's something you really do need to take in mind. So, would I recommend the Red Magic 3? Well, of course I would. This is one of the first mobile phones I've ever used that with the flick of a switch can become an instant gaming device on the go. It's got power and more than enough features to make any mobile gamer happy. But in my mind, the abilities of this phone are really put to good use when emulating older consoles. If you make this your daily driver, you'll have the ability to play some of the best games ever made right in your pocket all the time.